Go back to Hogwarts with that crap. Well, I uh, woke up a couple weeks ago, had a bruise on my side. Uh, didn't run into anything, didn't get hit by anything. Just got a bruise from supporting my own weight at night, apparently. <laughs> Sleeping is too much for me at this point. <laughs> this might be my last show, is what I'm telling you, folks. <laughs> so, but I based my whole life on uh, ice cream, as any normal person would. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to be shy. There's a couple people pretending they like this crap behind me, but no, ice cream is the real deal. I base everything in my life. My favorite kind of ice cream is called Neapolitan, which if you don't know, uh, Neapolitan is an Italian word that means two good flavors, one disgusting one. <laughs> ah. You hear that sound? That's a room divided by strawberries, what that is. But you know the correct answer. Strawberry is the correct answer. Go with your guts. I don't know anything about religion, politics. I hope you're not looking for any guidance. I don't have any. The only two things I know, number one, strawberry ice cream sucks. And number two, math is make-believe. Now, I know that second one makes me sound stupid, but is there any math teachers here? That's what I thought. They're all wizards. It's, yeah, it's sorcery as far as I'm concerned. Go back to Hogwarts with that crap. No, this isn't for dumb people. I'm not an idiot. There's a certain amount of math. There's addition, subtraction. But you remember you get around like seventh, eighth grade. They just started making stuff up, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you how you knew. When you got into class, you went in there and it was just all, they stopped using numbers in math. Anybody remember that? You just go in there, it's all letters. They were like A plus B equals C, Paul. I think it's done. I don't know. Did I miss English class? Is this a Scrabble challenge? <laughs> I think I gotta go. Even the units sounded like they made it up that day, you know, like this next unit's called guesstimate. Hee hee. <laughs> All you gotta do is guess the answers, Paul. Yeah, sounds easy, but I got the quiz back and I failed. I was like, how did I fail? This is a guess. <laughs> oh, you didn't guess close enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this, uh, this was the kicker. The next unit was called the Law of Diminishing Returns. This is how they actually explained it. They said, Paul, you know how you have one piece of cake, the second piece isn't as good? I said, no, I have no idea <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> you're eating the wrong cake. <laughs> I know I'm pretty pale. <laughs> I blend in with you people, but that's all right. I'm originally from upstate New York. That's where I get this tan from. And uh, soak it in, ladies. That's just a joke, sir. I'm a pale, pale fellow. This isn't even a spotlight. This is just me glowing from being in the sun earlier today. I store light. So tan is not one of my colors. I have two colors. I have white and I have red. I have where I put sunscreen and where I missed with the sunscreen, right? At the end of the day, I just look like a big fat candy cane sitting on the beach, big white handprint on my belly. That's not a good look. And I'm jealous of you people that tan, you get complimented, you know, strangers will come up and say, oh, what a beautiful tan. Whenever I spend all day in the sun, people come up and say, oh, that looks like it hurts. <laughs> you got a little fire engine red going there, lobster boy. <laughs> Put some Noxzema on that or something. I even have like a reddish hue to me. I don't know if I'm so pale you can see the blood through my skin <laughs> or what's going on. Like whenever I Photoshop my pictures on the computer to remove the red eye, it just blacks out my whole face. <laughs> Uh, it's good to be here. I'm staying at a very nice hotel. I don't want to brag. Uh, I got a pretty good memory foam mattress at the hotel. Yeah. Yeah, if you people don't know, a memory foam mattress is a mattress that lets you know exactly how fat you are. <laughs> That's right. Added bonus at the hotel, exactly how fat the person was the night before you were there. 
And believe it or not, it's always good when they're bigger than you, kind of nestle in that crevice. Doesn't feel so lonely. They always get roped into the weird shampoo they have. I don't know, they, they have some kind of weird fruit or something. This time, uh, it just said aromatic wood. <laughs> Which I don't know when shampoo got into the wood business. I don't know if, if that's a good thing, you know, to walk into a room and everyone's like, oh, he smells like he just got done sanding a bench. <laughs> no, it smells like I'm out in the woods. Is that... They clean? I don't know. Every time they do a deodorant commercial for a mountain fresh deodorant, I think they're being sarcastic, you know what I mean? Like all your friends that live in the mountains smell like crap, don't they? It's like, yeah, you're real mountain fresh, Bob. Mountain fresh. Had to rent a car too, never does a lot for your self-esteem when you go to the rental place. You ask for the cheapest piece of crap car you can get. Then they give you the same car that you actually own. <laughs> I'll let that one sink in for a minute. So, so uh, what else is going on? So yeah, I'm a pale guy. I live, I live in Los Angeles now. I made that move. Yeah, not a good move. Not for the pale people, not a good move. Uh, first couple weeks, even my friends are like, hey, you need to get that taken care of. I'm like, what? They're like, your face. <laughs> you need to do that spray tan or something. Which, I don't know about you, that just made me look like I stuck my face in a bowl full of Cheetos or something. <laughs> which I've done, it's delicious, but <laughs> it's an odd look. Oddly presidential. That lets some stress out of the room. I don't know if that's what was holding us back. That's one thing we can agree on. He's got a weird orange face. <laughs> so, but uh, I got a girlfriend. Sorry, everybody. I don't want to dangle this meat in front of you. <laughs> girlfriend is a Canadian, which I didn't know she's Canadian. She's got a tattoo of a maple leaf on her leg. I just thought she was a big fan of Autumn or something, but... <laughs> But that's what they do. When you're born in Canada, they will brand you with the maple leaf. Just so you can get back in without waiting in line. It's like a Disney pass. And uh, I feel like some of you guys are going to take this whole show way too seriously. I'm not sure. But she's, uh, she, yeah, she's, she's half black, she's half Scottish, and she's Canadian. Which is great, but it makes me feel like I bring nothing to the table. You know? <laughs> I'm like old-fashioned white guy. Like, not even of this century, you know? Like, it's not cool to look like me in 2017. I'm aware of that. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about hurting my feelings. I know that I look like somebody from uh, the past coming to give you a message about the future. <laughs> it's okay. But Drew Carey Jr. in 2017... <laughs> Not a good look. Drew Carey doesn't even look like this anymore. He changed it up. And I was trying to think, maybe it's just not my time. The chubby cheeks, pale, you know? When was it cool to look like me? I researched it, sir, because, you know, it's part of my job. Uh, so I went back. Not the 20s, not the 30s. You got to go back. Last time it was cool to look like me, I pinpointed it, was Europe in the 1600s. Yeah. <laughs> I missed my prime time window to be cool by about 400 years. And that's just because the bar was very, very low, you know? Everyone had bubonic plague and scurvy and typhoid. He had chubby cheeks back then, it was impressive to women, you know? Oh, I bet that guy's a king, he's got a castle, he can afford meat. But now looking like this, 2017, just sad white guy, you know? I'm allergic to hypoallergenic shampoo. That's how bad the earth wants to get rid of me. So, uh, what kind of a crowd do we have? Are we married folks? Married people? Round of applause? Oh. Happily married people. I can't even do a Tinder joke tonight. I'll still do it. Um, no, I got off Tinder because I have a girlfriend. That's the rule number one, classy thing to do. And uh, 
All the women in LA, they all have the same exact sentence on all their Tinder profiles. They all wrote this sentence. They say this, I'm fluent in sarcasm, he he. <laughs> so I'm a comedian. I wrote back to one of the girls like, oh, that's so cool that you're fluent in sarcasm. She was like, really? I was like, no, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Sure you know what fluent means? <laughs> Not sure. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I got ready for this special. Got a uh, pants, new, uh, new pants for the show. Big day, things are happening. <laughs> this guy's like, nah, I don't buy it. <laughs> no, these are the special looked worn in pants. You actually pay extra for somebody else to wear them for a couple weeks. <laughs> and just jog around. <laughs> And so, uh, I'd love that job. Uh, so, uh, so, I was in the, the mall, I bought pants, and a uh, weird thing happened at the register. I don't know if this has happened to you. Uh, the guy handed me the receipt. He said, hey, would you like to donate a dollar to this anti-bullying program? And I said, no, that's okay. He goes, ah, come on, you cheap weasel. <laughs> so, I think you're on the wrong side of this campaign, dude. Take it down a few notches with a name, Colin. We're right next to the food court. I feel like I'm getting shaken down for my lunch money again. <laughs> uh, it is weird to see everybody so inside their phones, you know, especially at the mall, you know, they're so happy flying a bird into a wall, you know, they're just smiling. And then you see when they almost run into you, they just look up and then they realize they're back in their disappointing life again. <laughs> they're like, ah, oh, crap, I'm me. This sucks. I wish I was a bird. Oh, I, I did see a weird thing in the mall. I saw an engagement sale at the mall, which I think that's the least romantic thing I've ever heard. A woman doesn't want to get married under those conditions, you know? The guy comes home, hey, honey, you know how you've been wanting to get married the last couple of years? Well, you are in luck. Because <laughs> today there's a sale at the mall. Yeah, a place right next to Spencer Gifts. And I kind of love you, so uh, let's do this. Married people, round of applause. How many people we have? Married people, okay. That's a lot of jewelry smashing together. Half of it's nice, right? Just the women win that one. The men's wedding ring is the saddest thing in the world, you know? It's like the money that's left over from the wedding, right? It's like a wire off a notebook. They don't care about you guys at all. Med's wedding ring reminds me of those things they put on rare birds and those wildlife TV shows, you ever see that? Put that copper band around the bird's talon. It's got a little serial number on it. These scientists shoot you down with a tranquilizer, see you in the right part of the country and throw you back. It's purely for tracking purposes, I think. As women get the nice one, right? That's the expensive one, right? We all know that. Here's the thing, I'm not against uh, uh, marriage. I like marriage. I think the jewelry thing is weird. Like, I think uh, you should bring all the money that you're gonna spend on the engagement ring, you go together to the mall, right? And then you make that decision together. You're like, all right, honey, here we are. Here's all the mall, the money we have uh, in this bag right here. Uh, and we're in the mall. So there's, I just wanna let you know we're in the mall, we have options. So. <laughs> The jewelry store right there, that's where you can get that ring that you dreamed about, but uh, like I said, we have options. Uh, so also, for the same exact price, right across the way, we can also buy the Cinnabon franchise right across the way. <laughs> that's right, we can buy an engagement Cinnabon. Is everyone getting that correctly? That's real estate and revenue for years to come that we could build our family fortune on? Or I get you that ring that you might lose in Zumba class next week. I say Cinnabon. I don't know about you guys. You begrudgingly clapped at that one. You're like, ah, good point, but I, no way we're getting away with that. Um, I just think you ever see people that wear a ring for like a really weird reason? Like you ever see these people that wear a ring just because they graduated from high school? Oh. That's sad, isn't it? 
How low were your expectations you got jewelry just because you finished 12th grade? Really, that's pretty, pretty. Is this the wrong room to do this joke in or what? You guys look at me fine. Everyone's hiding their hands. I don't know what he's talking about, man. Those people are losers. I just don't get it. Is that like proof for stupid people at their job when they do something dumb? Their boss is like, what are you, a moron? Did you even finish high school? The guy's like, yeah, I did. Check it out right there, buddy. <laughs> Read it and weep. <laughs> even played a little JV baseball. Check it out. A little ball in a glove right there means I was an athlete. <laughs> this side, I got a math book, too. Used to be math leets. You don't believe me? Check out my car. I got a tassel hanging from the rear of your mirror. <laughs> Getting too close to home for me. <laughs> so, but this is a cool night. Are you guys having fun so far? This is it. This is. <laughs> Working for years. This is on the David Letterman show, Craig Ferguson show, and next step, uh, wherever we are in Utah right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know where we are, man. Provo, that's it. Not Provo, Spain. Provo, Utah, buddy. I don't know if you knew where you were. <laughs> You're just like, I see a guy talking, there's a fruit stand behind him. I don't get it yet. <laughs> These are all the foods that I will not eat. <laughs> I did try a juice cleanse. You ever heard of that thing? A juice cleanse? I just finished a juice cleanse. Did a six hour cleanse. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, that was a five-day cleanse I just quit doing after six hours. <laughs> I'm in charge of the rules. I had sugar pains and uh, withdrawals from I don't know what. I don't know. I don't trust any of those juices, though, you know? Like the green machine. They make it like, oh, this is healthy. No, it looks like a dirty fish tank. <laughs> if your pool looked like that, you would clean it. Or the kale chips, that's why everyone wants kale. And it just looks like you cleaned out your lawnmower or something. <laughs> Am I hitting too close to home? You guys sound healthy. You're like, oh. I just, I just find it weird that there's uh, fruit readily available. Because you know, back when I was cool in the 1600s, uh, <laughs> People used to bring rotten fruit to the shows, and if you weren't any good, they would throw the fruit at you. Now, I ha I'm in charge of the fruit. <laughs> so this might be the greatest comedy show you've ever seen. If you're not paying attention, you're gonna get hit right in the head with a tomato. <laughs> like, how was the show? It was fantastic, guy hit me right in the face. <laughs> uh, so I got glasses, that's the, the long, uh, the short of it, sir. I got glasses and what I can see clearly now is that I have a big black dot in the middle of my eye floating around. And I went to the doctor, I was freaking out, thought I was gonna die, what is this, a brain cloud? What the heck is it? And uh, he said, oh, you don't gotta worry about that, that's called a floater. <laughs> you went to medical school for 12 years and you're gonna pull floater out on me? <laughs> My copay is a hundred bucks. Can you at least give me a word that ends in itis or osis? <laughs> I feel like I'm getting ripped off with floater. <laughs> it's a real thing. I didn't know that. Piece of, a piece of cartilage floating around your eye. Just gonna be there till it's not. <laughs> that was the prognosis. And that was the first time in my life they didn't want to fix anything, you know? Usually you want to fix it, do whatever. It was, ah, you're just gonna, it's gonna get worse from here on out. That was, the, <laughs> those were the words that I felt like I heard. Cause she was just like, hey, you're gonna get two or three more of those. They'll become friends. You can play music, shake your head around during Christmas. <laughs> Be like one big snow globe. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh man. There's a, there's a lot of food that I haven't tried. I, I've never tried coffee in my life, that's a true story. And it's because I tried coffee ice cream and it tasted like crap. So, the, in my book, the ice cream version is the best possible version. I've never had an egg either. And that's just because they don't make egg ice cream, so how good could it be? 
<laughs> Don't eat an egg, just wait for it to grow up. Tastes so much better. <laughs> Did you get that one? It's a chicken. <laughs> We're on TV right now. I can't wait for you guys to think this out. <laughs> oh. There is a food that I can't stand, though. Oh, it makes me angry to think about it. Uh, you got a food that you, can, you hate that you won't try at all? No. You'll try anything, huh? You're like the tester. You're like a food tester for the poison. Let her eat it. Mine is, uh, I, I hate this food with a passion. I, I, I don't hate people. I just hate inanimate objects, so I feel like that's better. Uh, but I hate, uh, I hate soup. I hate people that smell like soup. I hate people... <laughs> I don't like people with soup recipes. I don't even like the word soup, the way it starts and ends all slippery like that, you know? <laughs> and people get upset. They're like, how could you not like soup? Soup is good food. That's the slogan. I was like, nah, it's like 1% food. It's water that touched food at one point. That's all it is. They get all frustrated. How could you not like chicken noodle soup? Don't you like chicken? It's like, yeah. I love chicken. I just never thought that dumping a bucket of hot water on top would make it taste better. <laughs> Soup is literally the watered down version of what I want to eat. <laughs> and water doesn't help food. You don't order your steak soggy, do you? That doesn't work. I mean, here's the thing. You eat soup when you're broke. That's why it's so cheap. There's nothing in it, you know? You eat soup when you run out of teeth, when you can't chew actual food anymore. Still not on board, how about this? It's the only food that crackers make it taste better. That's how bad <laughs> soup is. If you need saltines to spice it up, I'm sorry. That's a crappy, crappy food. <laughs> I have tried a lot of foods. I, did, uh, I tried to eat at Subway nine days in a row. You ever do that? <laughs> Don't do that. I had, I had a moment of clarity with Subway. I, after nine days, I figured out that all the meat's the same. They just have a guy that spray paints in different colors in the back. <laughs> True story. One kind of meat, 40 kinds of bread, though. Which that can't be true, right? I think there's two kinds of bread. I think there's white and wheat. Everything else is something they made up that day. They get all excited. Try our new bread of the week, bedazzled pumpernickel. <laughs> Why is it sparkling? <laughs> Or it's a grain, you want nine grain, 20 grain, you want 40 grain bread? <laughs> Pretty soon it's just gonna be wood, right? <laughs> yeah, can I get a six inch turkey on, is that cedar? <laughs> Foot long roast beef on bamboo. Yeah, I want it toasted and varnished. Give it a good shellacking. <laughs> Protect that wood. <laughs> So, uh, I, the other thing I was gonna talk about, so I got glasses, and I was thinking about getting a tattoo. Now, I'm trying to think, how many people have good tattoos? Round of applause. <laughs> That's kind of what's hurting my decision. Because <laughs> even people that like their tattoos, you find that they lose steam halfway through explaining it, you know? Like, oh, mine, I still like it. It's a gnome that's playing football. And yeah, I probably shouldn't have got this one. I probably, <laughs> probably should have sobered up then I could wear short sleeves in the summer without my kids laughing at me. <laughs> still want to make that mistake, man. And I've lived through a couple generations. I've seen them, you know? Like, uh, I remember when I was in college, everyone got a barbed wire tattoo. Why wouldn't you want fake barbed wire drilled into your arm? That's a good decision. <laughs> If you work at Bank of America, right? <laughs> and then uh, everyone got the Chinese symbol. Nothing is the Chinese language, but the hardest language to learn. No one ever took it in school. You just gotta trust that Vinny at the tattoo shop has perfect Chinese script. <laughs> and if you go to a Chinese guy, you just gotta trust that he's not goofing on you and put cashew chicken on your neck instead of, <laughs> instead of loyalty or whatever you want. <laughs> I don't know. I guess here's the thing. Here's the analogy. Like, remember the Fitbit? Everybody had the Fitbit. We all had it for exactly a month. And then we all decided, oh, this is stupid. Why do we have this? That's what I'm worried my tattoos are going to be. <laughs> like, if I get three bad tattoos, it's like wearing a Fitbit, a Snuggie, and Crocs for the rest of my life. I don't think I can go through with it. But, uh... But also, uh, I was gonna talk about uh, Burt's Bees. You ever heard of that guy, Burt's? 
got a lot of bees, and uh, it's a weird thing. A beauty product based on a 95-year-old hobo with a dirty beard and a raggedy hat. <laughs> and the reason I know what he looks like is because they have a picture on the side of the box of exactly what this guy looks like. And it's almost a testament to how good the products are. That Oh, we can put an old-looking, creepy guy on the side and you'll still buy our beauty product. Because <laughs> you know it works. And Bert, I mean, the, the hottest thing is the chapstick. And Bert, from what I can tell, doesn't have any lips. I think he's 90% beard. And so... <laughs> and you know they had a meeting. They were like, hey, we got this new moisturizer. Who should we put on the side? Jennifer Aniston, Salma Hayek. And one guy's like, how about Bert? Isn't he already on the side of that Gordon's fish sticks box? <laughs> yep, but he's looking to get back in the game. <laughs> oh man. So this is gonna this is a fun night. I'm wired now. I'm gonna have a tough time sleeping. And uh, and uh, I was trying to find a better way to sleep. And uh, I went to the doctor, and they said, "Here's a natural thing you can take. It's called melatonin." They said, "Oh, it's organic. Your body makes it." What she thought was gonna relax me, but just in my mind, I was creeped out because I was like, oh, if our body makes it, then where do you guys get it from? <laughs> I was just picturing all these warehouses from like the vampire movies of people hanging upside down, draining melatonin. <laughs> Because it is weird, because most of the day you feel like you don't have any energy at all, and then at night you can't go to sleep. Isn't that a weird thing? And then, so everyone's got like five hour energy in a bottle. Yeah, they literally sell energy in a bottle, five hour energy. And energy bars is the thing I tried, because my mom is a very cool lady. She runs the New York City Marathon every year. She's run the New York City Marathon 25 years in a row. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And what makes that applause so sweet is that I've never had to run a step myself and you guys still clap for my mom running 26.2 miles. It feels pretty good and it took no effort at all in my, in my part. And so, so she'll run and she's just one of those people that just runs, like she doesn't wear headphones, she doesn't do anything. She just runs until the voices in her head stop, you know what I mean? <laughs> And so when she's running these marathons, they give her all these energy bars and all this stuff, and uh, she gives them to me because she thinks, oh, Paul's a performer, dynamic figure, he'll use the energy bars, and don't tell her that I stand in one place and turn my head to both sides of the room. That's all the energy I need. <laughs> so I, t I ate this energy bar, a power bar for power and energy, and I don't know if you have ever done that, but uh, it doesn't work. Um, and it just made me angry to eat. It just tasted like a piece of tar, you know? <laughs> And I don't know if that's where the energy was supposed to come from, just the anger of eating something <laughs> that you thought was a candy bar and it turned out to be the worst thing that you've ever eaten in your life. <laughs> and so it didn't work. And then, but then there's stages. That's the number one. That's what you're supposed to eat before you run the marathon. And then and there's a number two. That's just the goo that you shoot in your mouth. Like if you're running so much that you don't have time to eat, which hasn't happened to me, by the way. I've never had that problem. <laughs> I usually find if I'm running long enough, I'll just stop and eat. <laughs> and then there's actually a bar that you're supposed to eat after you use your energy to replenish your energy. It's all about energy. It's like uh, filling an iPhone, you know? And uh, so this one is, uh, it tastes like peanut butter. That's why I liked it. I was like, oh, I'll eat this one. But it said on the side, helps build lean muscle, which that part kind of confused me because I, uh, I have very little muscle right now, I'll be honest with you. And I would like it to be as big as possible. I don't... <laughs> I don't want anything lean. I have, well, I want my fat lean. I could do that. I have an overabundance of fat right now, and if there's a bar that would lean that out and give me wiry, lanky fat and huge bulbous muscle and taste like peanut butter, that's the big important part. I don't know. So, but I'm not gonna run a marathon. I know you're worried, but no, I'm not. So, uh, so uh, I, do, I do talk a lot about sports, too. I played basketball in college about 30 pounds ago, and uh, I'm still in shape for baseball, though. Let's be honest. You ever see those guys? <laughs> They'll play till they're, like, 90 now. They keep changing the rules. Even if the guy wants to quit, he's like, hey, here's my glove. I don't want to play in the field anymore. The manager's like, all right, you can be our designated hitter then. All you got is hit. Like, all right, what if I don't want to run the bases either? 
That's all right, we'll get you a pinch runner, too. All right, what if I don't want to do anything? I just want to look fat in a uniform. All right, you can be our first base coach. And if you've seen baseball, they're the third base coach. He gives signals, does stuff. The guy at first base, they haven't needed that guy since the Little League when the kids were too dumb to make it the first base, you know? <laughs> needed some kid's dad with the flashlights from the airport to bring him down, you know? Trail of M&Ms for the chubby kid to make it. <laughs> that kid was me. <laughs> but I, I, I did uh, become a TV sports anchor for a little while. I was an ABC sports anchor, which sounds impressive, but it was in Redding, California, where there are no sports. Uh, <laughs> no, they have some, but I thought I was going to cover like NFL, NBA. I just ended up covering like seven-year-olds playing soccer on TV. <laughs> Which, nothing against them, but I still try to make it dramatic, you know? I'd be like, Channel 7, game of the week, the Bears versus the Cats. Both teams coming in with a record of 0-0-8. Zero, zero, and eight. <laughs> That's because we haven't had any goals so far this season. And there's only two teams in the league. The Bears start off dribbling, Sam Decker dribbling through. He's got an open field if he wants. Wait, he stops, he bends over. He found a penny, okay? <laughs> Bears celebrating that penny. <laughs> now Brad Smith driving through. He's got a open field, but they're yelling something at him. They're yelling, he's got cooties, apparently, is what they're yelling at Brad. Brad yelling back adamantly that he doesn't have cooties. <laughs> now Brad's little sister Amy coming out, administering what looks like a cootie shot, if I could see. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Yeah, that's a cootie shot right there. Now the ice cream truck is coming. Everyone's running off the field. <laughs> We're gonna have to take a commercial break. There's no one left. <laughs> Sounds more fun than it was. Uh, if you want to know more about me and who doesn't, let's be honest, sir, I'm adorable. I have a website. It's paulhasawebsite.com. Yeah, it's pretty clever. There's also paulmorrissey.com. He's a real estate agent in San Diego. Don't buy anything off that guy's website. And a friend tried to buy my CD, ended up with a $1.2 million mansion in La Jolla. And uh, he, he just works the Sizzler. He can't handle the payments, so he's hiding in Oregon right now. So it's a sad story. So make sure you go to paulhasawebsite.com. All right. Are you ready? I feel it. Okay. All right. We're, gonna, we're finishing strong. I know you guys, some of you guys are crashing. Some of you guys are, you had too many gummy bears. We're going to finish strong, though. Like, I wish I was you to know how hard it's be laughing in 30 seconds. That's how good this next joke is. <laughs> Am I being too cocky? Maybe. That's what Friday night in Provo, Utah deserves. Am I right, people? <laughs> so I, uh, I went to a nutritionist to try to eat better, which is a weird thing. You basically tell someone what you ate, and they tell you how bad it was they ate it. <laughs> it's like going to confession for food, pretty much, you know? <laughs> I don't need that kind of guilt in my life. And you always lie about what you eat, make it sound like uh, healthier than it is. You don't sound like a fat sob to this person, you know? So she said, what did you have for lunch today, Paul? I said, I had a sandwich, no mayonnaise, no cheese. She said, that sounds healthy. What kind of bread did you use? Uh, chocolate? <laughs> what kind of sandwich is that? It is an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> I deliver or what, man? Come on, you looked unfazed. You're the only one that wasn't like, oh yeah, that was supposed to be good, and it was. <laughs> I always wonder, when I, whenever I went to the nutritionist, I always wondered, like, the July 4th, uh, the hot dog eating contest is coming up, and I always wondered if those guys had a nutritionist, you know, when you go in there, and they're like, what'd you have for uh, lunch yesterday? And they're like, ah, oh, it's not good. <laughs> it was my cheat day. <laughs> what'd you have? Just hot dogs. How many? One, two, uh, 48. <laughs> Were you over your calorie count? By 9,000 calories. <laughs> I just had water, though. <laughs> oh, I 
I talk a lot about food too much, man. I remember, I remember one time, because people are always sensitive, like gluten-free. Everyone wants to know exactly what's in their food, you know? And everyone gets really sensitive if something is on your food and you don't think it's supposed to be. Like, I had a guy, when I was working at a club, he spilled cheese on my fries. He said, I'm sorry, I was making a hamburger, I spilled cheese on your fries. It's like, what, why, why are you apologizing? <laughs> You're acting like it was poison. You spilled cheese on my fries. That's like spilling sunshine on a cloudy day. <laughs> That's like spilling frosting on a birthday cake. That's not a mistake. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. <laughs> so, uh, uh, oh, well, I was gonna tell you, so, I was, uh, a couple weeks ago, I got a letter, a picture of me from the police department of me running a red light. They wanted $365, you know? And the worst thing, it wasn't even a good picture, you know, it was like grainy, black and white, couldn't really see my face, you know? You figure for Hollywood, they could spruce it up with some special effects. <laughs> Had me driving a Porsche out of an explosion with Angelina Jolie or something. <laughs> But the best part, I got out of the ticket because on the picture, they removed the red eye, so it just blacked me right out of there. <laughs> See, it's all coming together, everybody. But I do want to thank you guys so much. Give a round of applause to the dry bar people, everybody working hard for these. These are awesome. If you enjoy the show, make sure you come back and uh, make sure you check out the specials on the website and everything. And uh, I will leave you on this. I'm going to do another great joke for you. I don't mean to make it uncomfortable, but it's going to be good. So you don't have anything to worry about. Just sit back, relax, let the laughter hit you right in the face. No, I can't thank you guys enough. This is a truly a dream come true, especially have the, uh, every food that I've never eaten in my life sitting right behind me. I still don't even know what half of that stuff is. I don't... All right, all right, I'm get focused now. Um, so I live in California, which uh, is a cool place, kind of free, and uh, we have different laws, like we had the gay marriage law first, and then we didn't have it, and then they had the gay marriage law everywhere. But in the meantime, they ended up with all these other rinky-dink marriage laws, you know, like common law marriage, you ever hear that? That's just, if you live with the same person for a couple of years, whether you like it or not, boom, you're married, yeah. That's one that scares me, you know? No party, no honeymoon, no cake. Nothing, you just wake up, you're married. That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> and then a lot of states ended up having gay marriage and common law marriage, which I think is very confusing, because what happens if you just end up with like two loser dudes sharing the same crappy apartment for a couple years? <laughs> it's been known to happen. Both working part-time at the pizza place, hanging out every weekend, a few years goes by, boom, they're married. <laughs> See them at a party, they're newlyweds. I didn't know Tony and Jim were gay. They're married now? When did they fall in love? They didn't. They just never got full-time jobs. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.